Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia video. Today we are going to talk about my boy Setzer. He just got a big time upgrade in a big way. He's got an FR Echo and a BT. Uh, his BT is extremely impactful. I would say if you're going to go for Setzer, you definitely want the BT. If you're not willing to get the BT, then don't go for Setzer is what I would say. Uh, if you're not familiar with him, he is a ranged damage dealer. Or no, he's actually magic. He's I guess he does have a little bit of range, but he's mostly a magic damage dealer. Um, but he really is like a big time utility character. He uh, can delay. He has a really cool freeze debuff. Um, he, does, he can give the party rainbow numbers, which is max brave damage. His BT now gives the party max HP damage like Queena does. So there's a lot to like here with Setzer if you're willing to go in on him. Um, so yeah, in this video, we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at his calls, his artifacts, and his fears. So we will start with the calls. And the call is notable mainly for Freeze Joker because right off the bat, this applies the Freeze debuff for three turns. This definitely can come in clutch in a fight. Uh, the Freeze debuff, if you're not familiar with it, it makes it so the enemies cannot gain Brave which in turn, if they cannot gain Brave, they cannot HP damage you. So it's basically like while they have the debuff, you kind of can't die other than instant kill attacks, right? So the freeze, I think, is very good there. Uh, then the Dive Bomb LD. Now, I believe this will do like uh, rainbow numbers, um, but it I, I don't believe it'll give rainbow numbers to the party like the normal LD does. So it's not nearly as good. Um, it will do a party attack and overflow up. Um, and it will do HP damage up for the party. So the HP damage up is nice. So it is good for that. And I believe the attack itself will do rainbow numbers, but I don't think it will continue to give the party rainbow numbers like it normally does. I could be wrong on that, but the calls are definitely solid, right? Like you get freeze, um, you get some nice party buffs, including HP damage up, which is a really important thing you want to have on a call. So yeah, his call is definitely pretty good. All right, so let's go into Setzer himself and let's look at his artifacts. So if you guys remember Queena, um, our, you know, Setzer, you would want to build kind of in a different way. Cause even though he does deal damage, here's the thing. He's going to be dealing a lot of rainbow numbers and max HP damage. So the rainbow numbers, remember are max brave damage and the HP damage means that'll be max no matter how much brave you even do anyways. Right now the the numbers aren't guaranteed. So it's a little less consistent than queen but you can get it for a longer duration. But when you are hitting cap damage, attack and brave damage loses a lot of importance, which is traditionally what you want. So literally, you just go all in on max brave on a character like that. Like max brave is his most important stat because if he's dealing cap damage and he's going to get max HP anyways, just give him max brave. So um, what you want to go with is three max brave and all in boost. All in boost is going to give him 5% to all stats for sure. So you definitely want that. So with that in mind, we're going to look at his spheres. Now, he's got an A slot and two E slots, right? So once again, we, we're really going to focus on brave damage. So the A slot is a spot where you can definitely use a, like a solo max brave sphere without having attack or brave damage. Now, I put Steiner on there, and this is definitely a spot you could use Steiner because uh, when you deal a crit... In, you know, keep in mind, rainbow numbers do count as crits because you're doing max damage. So it's going to raise his max brave and is stacking up to 10%, right? Now, I would say uh, something like Bart's would probably be the premium one because I believe that is a crit hit for 20%. Um, so, or, or or it might be break. I don't remember. It's one or the other, but it's a 20%. So Bart's is probably like the premium option here, but um, Steiner, I had one. I thought it was fine. Just get him some max brave, right? Um, you can even give them some eye brave, max brave combos if you wanted to, but really attack and brave damage you don't need. So you can just avoid those and go with what you got on A slot. So I feel like a lot of players, you're probably going to have just a spare um, A sphere that has just max brave on it. Probably toss it down there, right? Now E slot, the other thing here, right? Normally on a damage dealer, the E slot, you'd want something like Yuffie or Seymour, right? Like one of these attack up ones. Once again, on sets are not nearly as important. And I would argue like, even on a character like this, you could say, well, maybe giving it to the party is still good, but like he's going to give rainbow numbers to the party. Like he's going to give all this stuff to the party. So he doesn't even need the party buffs. So I'd say on sets are here, um, just giving him more debuffs and utility is what you'd want to do. So I actually think something like Ferris is super good here because you're just adding poison to his kit. And he's a character that, um, you know, and this is like an aura poison, so it doesn't even take up a debuff slot, but Setzer doesn't use a lot of debuffs anyways. I think Freeze is his only debuff. So you could give him, some of the E slots do add physical debuffs. You could give him those if you want to. So I would say on the E slot, I really like Ferris because I like the poison there. Um, 
but yeah, otherwise just give him a debuff. So I just put his own, which is going to be a speed down. So, you know, I think Fujin's another speed down you could use. I think Tidus is a speed down. Um, you could do, I don't, I wouldn't recommend Ultimecia. That's a defense down. A defense doesn't matter when you're doing rainbow numbers, like you're doing max damage. So I probably would avoid the defense down, but if you did like a speed down, um, or like a poison, I think those are really good debuffs to put on there, but just give your guy more utility just to make him better. Right. Um, if you're desperate, you could give him Vanille, but because he's not like a character that is a break character, I don't know if I would waste a Vanille on him, to be honest. Unless you've got tons of Vanilles, you could, because then he's got Dispel along with everything else. But he's not the ideal character for Vanille, but you could put it there, right? Uh, so with that being said, uh, let's hop into the showcase. Um, I might give him something other than Pandemonium uh let's just yeah uh, actually attack's gonna be oh i know what we'll do we'll do brothers because that'll be a max brave up that's more to what he wants so i'm just gonna run him with a couple of support units and we'll just see what he does now sets are typically the way you want to use him i'm gonna feature him as the main damage dealer here but typically he's like a slot three unit you're probably gonna pair him with the support or another damage dealer the thing with the character like sets are, you have the luxury of pairing him with two damage dealers because the support isn't as important when you're hitting max cap numbers, right? So you could put him in like a really offensive build with two like big time damage dealers. That would work as well. Just keep in mind the uh, max HP damage part of his skill does not work with Astos because he scales off of his overhead. It's not like a traditional, uh, it doesn't work like a traditional um, HP damage attack. So it won't work on that. He'll still, like, Astos can still deal, well, no, with other attacks that don't scale off of, but everything does. Yeah, it's always just going to scale on the overhead. So, yeah, it just won't work. Okay. So, Rosa, we just opened with BT to get that going. We'll drop the Paladin and Cecil down. Uh, now we got a Setzer turn. So, with Setzer, you can really start however you want because he's a lot of has a lot of utility, right? So we're just going to start with boost all, which is just going to give us some nice party stats. So sure, we'll we'll do that. It's very uh, very limited amount of uses, but you get it for seven turns, right? So the AH is just going to give you some nice stats and some nice numbers. Um, what we'll do is we'll start with freeze joker. Now you see freeze joker, very limited amount of uses, but it's because it's an extremely powerful attack. It does have high turn rate. So sometimes if you click and hold on it, you see Setzer's turn bumps up there. Now, there was a misconception. Somebody in the comments of my video said, oh, I didn't realize if you hold on it, you have a chance to move up. No, like when you press Freeze Joker, he's going to move up if he's going to move up. Clicking and holding on a skill makes it so you can see where their next turn goes. So on a high turn rate move, sometimes you bump up, sometimes you don't. By holding on it, it's going to tell you if you do. But if I didn't hold on it, he still would move up there. So we'll do Freeze Joker. Uh, you can see the rainbow numbers coming out right away, and we just did a mill AoE with Freeze Joker. Now, Freeze Joker, we don't really care about the damage because it's such a limited uh, skill use anyways. We just want that Freeze debuff, right? Um, so it doesn't consume Brave, so you see his Brave is just capped right away at the end of it. Does an AoE attack. A mill AoE is fine, standard damage. Uh, it's going to do a, a max Brave up to the party, and then it's going to put the Freeze debuff down on the enemies. Now... The freeze debuff is two turns, but one of his other buffs extends his debuffs by one turn. So you're actually getting it for three turns, which is really nice. The freeze debuff, now the enemies just cannot gain brave. So if they attack me and break me, they won't gain brave. If they do a brave gain ability, they won't gain brave. So the reason why it's such limited skill use is because it's ridiculously busted. Because now for the next three enemy turns, they just cannot touch me unless they cleanse it, which some enemies can do that, right? Uh, with Aerith, I am going to open... I love this, by the way. Uh, Red Crystal Room, uh, my Aerith, because of one of my passives I put on, my, one of my crystal passives, she just gets two turns to start a fight. It's so awesome. Because now I can set up with the BT. I love this because I can set up with their BT. Um, and then I can ramp, although I pressed the wrong button, darn it. I think I did seal evil. I meant to press the BT. So normally what I do is I press BT and then I use healing wind to max out her overhead, which is really nice. Uh, the next time we get Aerith up though, we'll do a big ramp and try to get to force time before the enemies do. Okay. Now, Setzer, we probably will do his BT phase, but he's not like the type of character you want to do BT phase with typically, I would say. Actually, let us we might just do it right now. Then we can just go through the kit, right? I think that actually is wise. Because I'm not going to like, we're not doing a damage test. We're not trying to max those damage. I just want to show him off. 
So sure, let's do that. Let's just go into his BT right away. That way we don't have to worry about the enemies going to force time either. So yeah, let's just go into his full BT phase and then we can just show off the kit. Okay, so we did Freeze Joker, so you understand what that does. We'll do Red Card next. And Freeze Joker, by the way, is AoE. Red Card now is more single target. So we're, we're going to hit this. I want to see the damage on this. Okay, 1.5 mil. Pretty solid for a 15 CP. And once again, we don't have... Uh, or we do have full uh, BT ores up other than his own. So that's pretty good. So Red Card is also high turn rate. So sometimes he will jump up in the turn order. Uh, he Brave gains scaled on his Max Brave, which is good. Does a bunch of attacks. Now, it does delay the enemies uh, by one turn, which is good. So, he's got a little bit of delay there. And he gets an attack up and a max rave up for six turns on that. Uh, sure, let's hit the EX. This is Prismatic Flash. Let's see the damage on this. Okay. <clears throat> I think that was like 1.1 mil. So, air is off turn, by the way, won't do damage right now because we didn't put anything into it, which is fine. Uh, so, the EX, Brave Gain, scale on max rave. Another reason why max rave is a good stat on him. Um, it sets allies brave to highest, uh, current brave. So what this does, I, I would equate this to, uh, Ursula a little bit. So it's one of those deals where Ursula gets around negating brave gain because Ursula sets your brave to a value. It's not actually like gaining brave. It's just setting it to a value. This sets her works the same way. So whatever it is, is whichever ally on your team has the highest current brave, it sets the party brave to that. And Setzer, because a lot of his skills, he's not dumping brave or he's really good at retaining brave, he might be the one with the highest brave and he will help the allies keep brave. So that's very good on that EX, right? Um, nine hit AoE attack, split HP for five, five HP dumps. Um, only the last HP attack consumes his brave on that, so he holds it for most of the dumps and it extends all of his buffs by one turn. He gets a buff called Blackjack. So the Blackjack buff is attack and max brave up, brave regen up, crit brave damage up, um, HP damage up, party attack up, and party max brave up. So a lot of good buffs on that one. Like a lot packed into one buff there, right? Uh, next, let's go and do Dive Bomb. This is one of the more important parts of his kit. This is what originally made him really good when he first got his LD. You're going to see the rainbow numbers flowing down, 1.6 mil. Once again, nothing about his damage is going to be blowing you away. It's very average damage, but it's all the utility that he's carrying, right? So Dive Bomb is an AoE attack. It restores the skill use of skill 1 and skill 2. So here's the thing. Freeze Joker with 3 skill uses seems limited, but now you've got 4 Dive Bombs. So that's 4 more uses of skill uh, Freeze Joker. So you're actually getting 7 uses of it. Plus, if you do do a BT phase, you can do it again. So uh, you can have a lot of skill uses of free, free Stoker because of the way it interacts with the LD. Now, the other thing that it's going to do, it's going to give him a buff called Fixed Dice for 12 turns, and then the allies get Fixed Dice for 6 turns. So Fixed Dice... Um, this is what makes his debuffs last one more turn. So you want to make sure before you hit Freeze Joker that this is up. He does have it at quest start. It's going to do a party attack up, HP damage up, and Brave gains up. Overflow stolen up and Overflow gained up. You have a chance to deal maximum Brave damage, which is the rainbow numbers. It decreases with the buff duration and it cannot be extended and it does decrease during a burst phase, right? So since um, Setzer has it for 12 turns... I don't remember the exact numbers on it, but he's going to have it like 100% brave numbers until I think it gets down to like six or seven turns. And then like the allies will have it at like 70% and it's slowly going to have less chance to hit rainbow numbers as it decreases down, right? Uh, but you have a chance to get those rainbow brave numbers. Uh, next, I guess we will pop the FR. Now we'll go over the FR when I actually use it, which will probably be on his next turn outside of burst phase. And we'll talk about the HP gains and all that, which his conditions are actually pretty good. All right, two mil, very standard damage on the FR. Um, and then, I mean, sure, let's do another Freeze Joker because we can. You can see the rainbow numbers are just spitting out there. <laughs> nice zero damage, Aerith. We'll take that zero damage. We'll do a red card here, do a little delay. Perfect. All right, and then we're going to hit the BT. So this is the attack we're going to talk about. Of course, we're going to get triple sevens, right? Yes. Here's the thing that's very unique about the BT. The turn duration is random. So this BT is going to last between 6 and 12 turns. And this is the thing. Let's see what our luck is like. What is our luck like? 7 turns. All right. Not the greatest, but it's one more turn than the minimum. So sure, we'll take it. There is that little bit of randomness there. 
but it's fine because even at the minimum of six turns you can still get a lot out of it so it's just if you get 12 turns you like got it the whole fight basically um so joker's death we just did it did the big attack they're pretty standard i'd say bt damage um so the burst effect six to 12 turns we hit seven so not so lucky in my first try um, brave damage limit up hp damage limit up and then all hp attacks have a 70% chance to do the highest damage they can. So this is like the Queen effect. It's just each HP dump has a 70% chance to do it instead of 100%. But the reason why this is good is you can potentially have it for a much longer duration and you're comboing rainbow brave damage with it. So it's kind of crazy. Like you can cheese fights with this, right? So now we can kind of look forward, look at our allies and we're going to see HP numbers maybe being a little bit higher than normal. We're going to see some rainbow numbers sneaked in there, but it won't be every number, right? Um, so let's go ahead. Uh, actually, I think we can pray and ramp a little bit. Oh, actually, we're not going to pray with Rosa because we're burning her BT effect when we do that. That's why Aerith is so good because her BT effect doesn't have turn duration. So you can pop it right away and then ramp and you don't lose it. Aerith is so ridiculous. Aerith is crazy. Um, sure, we'll put a Raijin prod down. Actually, I got to make sure I put um, what's-her-face down just in case my dodgy dodge one because uh, that will stop the gravity if they get their force attack. Rydia, <laughs> that's the one. That's the one I'm thinking of. We got to put that Rydia down just in case. And then, yeah, we'll, now that we've seen all the base numbers and they're fairly standard, we'll just kind of go into a force time and kind of just let things ride, right? So we'll hit this Radiant Breath. We definitely want that up. And then we're going to ramp to force, and I'm hoping we can beat them just so that they, I don't have to deal with their force, but it's fine. The gravity shouldn't do anything too bad to us. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's start ramping. Uh, it's going to be close. They might actually get into their force, but that's fine. Uh, let's ramp again. Uh, yeah, I think they're going to get there. That's fine, though. We'll just ramp until they get it. Okay. And then we're going to go into a Setzer uh, Force Time, and we're going to check out those Force Conditions on them. All right, this should miss because we put down the Rydia. Oh, it didn't. Okay, interesting. So we're going to lose BT effect, which is fine. Setzer's not like a crazy damage dealer, so we're not too worried about that. Um, what we could do with you is I guess we'll seal evil down. Oh, you know what probably happened? I wonder. Oh, no, I still have Rydia on. I don't know. Maybe it's just random when it misses them. Maybe I just got lucky. <clears throat> maybe it, it isn't guaranteed, but the last couple times it did work. All right. So... The nice thing, yeah, in the gra since that was gravity, like Freeze Joker didn't affect it, right? So they, they definitely can find ways to get around our shenanigans, right? But let's go ahead. Let's hit the FR here. Uh, we don't really need the launch. That's fine. So this is called Jackpot. Pairing up with Barrett. <clears throat> oh, love that. Shooting the cards down. Putting the beams in. You can see a, a good little bit amount of rainbow numbers there. Two mil on the attack, which that's standard FR damage. Um, so what he's going to do is he's going to, it's, this is also going to apply the fixed dice. So now this is the same buff from the LD that gives the rainbow number. So he gets it for 12 party members, allies get it for six. Uh, the force time effect is party HP damage and limit plus 50% when you're hitting broken enemies or you're breaking a target. So HP damage and limit of 50%, that's pretty hefty. Like that's good HP damage up, right? That's great. Uh, then the HP conditions are... Uh, if the enemy has zero brave or is broken on turn, that's 30%. So this is something that doesn't require attacking. So if I ramp with Aerith and an enemy is zero brave or broken, we're going to get good gains at 30% there. So Aerith in theory should do like 110%, maybe 115. And then if you deal max brave damage, well, technically it's 9,999 or more, you're going to get 40%. And with rainbow numbers, it's guaranteed. And even without rainbow numbers, most characters can handle that just fine as long as they're maxed out. So Setzer is a very free and easy 70% that pretty much anybody can hit. So it's nice, right? So let's go ahead. Yeah, let's just echo right away here with Rosa. <clears throat> uh, let's see what kind of gains we get here. Yeah, 93. That's good on an attack FR for sure because she got the full 70 plus the 20, right? So he is a good FR to lead with an Echo. Let's grab an Aerith here. 
Once again, as long as the enemies are broken or have zero brave, uh, I'm thinking this is like 110 to 115. I'm thinking so. What do we got? Yeah, 113. Right in that range I was talking about. Uh, and we should be able to do it again because the enemies are still broken. <clears throat> and the thing is, is with the freeze debuff on, even if they unbreak, they can't gain brave. So they're going to sit at zero. So you're still going to get it even if they unbreak, which is really nice, right? Yeah, 113, man. That's pretty good. All right, well, at this point, we've pretty much said everything we need to about Cessor. So we're just going to ride out this force time and see what happens. See if we can kill. Once again, this is the Astos uh, fight. So this is a newer Shinryu. Uh, let's see if we can take it out without even really trying that hard. <clears throat> now, it is kind of hard to tell because all the numbers come up so fast. It's kind of hard to tell when you're hitting the max HP damage, right? I think the time you would really notice it is if it's a fight where you normally would do zero HP damage, then you can tell like when they hit and when they don't. Uh, but you can just trust we're doing big numbers here. And you can visually see the rainbow numbers as they come in, right? So actually, just for fun, um, I'm going to do is well, let's let's echo first. We'll get a little bit deeper, but I am going to do his BT effect again. I want to I want to gamble. I want to see if we can get a little bit luckier and get a higher turn duration. I want to see like a 10, 11, or 12 turn burst phase out of this guy or burst uh, burst buff, right? I want to see if we can get that a little bit longer. See if my luck is, th is that bad. That seven turns is just what I get. Let's see what happens. Um, Aerith will seal evil. That's fine. I mean, when you've got Setzer rolling like this though, and you've got that freeze down and you're dealing max damage, like you do feel pretty powerful and pretty unkillable. So is Setzer is a character too with, with these types of mechanics, this is a kit that will last a long time. Uh, I would not be surprised if current JP users are still using this guy because once again, it doesn't matter if your attack falls off because you're hitting max damage on everything, right? Freeze is a debuff that will not age. Like freeze is always good. Freeze has never not been good in this game, right? Rainbow numbers have never not been good. <laughs> max HP damage will never not be good. So if you want a safe invest character that's gonna last a long time, I mean, Setzer is it for sure. Um, let's do the BT effect. Let's see if we can get lucky here. Come on, give me, I want 10 plus turns on this BT effect. Now, normally you would not want to use it if you have five turns left, but this is a showcase setting. We just wanna, we just wanna get it out. Let's see what we can get here. <clears throat> How many turns? S a seven again? Come on! All right, so not the luckiest, but I think it's an equal chance to hit any numbers. I don't know that they're weighted differently. They could be though. I mean, somebody that you know is a number cruncher or like goes into the data, maybe it is, but I think it's just probably an equal chance to each one. But I could be wrong. Um, sure. Let's see evil again. All right. Let's just see if we can finish this fight off. <laughs> I guess seven turns is what I get for Setzer. We'll try to use him some more. Um, I am going to try to tackle dimensions on 16. We'll probably use him there. I would assume he's good because it's his fight. Sure. Let's drop a luminous arrow down. Go for it, Rosa. And drop a pallet and Cecil on their face while you're at it, please. Can you drop pallet and Cecil on their face? Yes, please. Drop it down. Uh, I feel like these enemies are not going to last long. Um, Setzer. I mean, sure, let's use the EX since it's there. But I'll probably dive bomb because we probably need to refresh the uh, rainbow numbers on everybody. Look at that. Oh, one thing too to note about Setzer. The EX is a very good button to press because it increases all of his buffs by one turn. So it's not going to take away a turn from him having rainbow numbers. So the EX is good to press. Because you just upkeep that turn and then you can go back to doing other stuff. Um, I think there was a misconception where some people thought the EX wasn't good to press. Because you'd like lose a turn of the rainbow numbers. But it does increase all your buffs by one turn, including the rainbow numbers. So definitely a good button to press. It doesn't waste anything. Alright, I mean these enemies are almost dead. I'm hoping I can get one more attack in. All right, and you can see these guys just aren't getting, well, and they're missing, by the way, from the Rydia, but, like, they're just not getting brave. You see they unbroke, and they're just at zero. That's the freeze, right? Um, What's Divine Blast? That's a button I just don't press very often. Well, how's Divine Blast looking at 999%? 17 mil? <laughs> plus the uh, plus the Paladin and Cecil? I mean, sure, that's like a 24 mil shot to that guy. Actually, 8 mil we got. It's like 25 mil. Um, Setzer. Yeah, let's dive bomb. Hit that LD. 
I mean, I'm not going to lie. Rosa is probably a better DPS than Setzer, but it's what Setzer does for the rest of the party. Uh, and there you go, guys. Wipe that fight off the planet. So let me know what you think of Setzer. He is a fantastic character. Thanks for watching. We'll catch y'all on the next one.